I'm Greg Stone. Thank you for watching this uh, webinar. We're here today to talk about a very common clinical problem that all interventional cardiologists, peripheral vascular interventionalists experience, and that is how to best manage calcified or rigid resistant vessels, either in the coronary or peripheral vasculature. And as everyone knows, this is an issue that uh, probably almost beyond anything else makes our job very difficult in the cath lab to be able to successfully get a good result safely for the patients. And even more importantly than that, we've learned from studies that we and others have done, particularly over the last five to six years, that a coronary and peripheral vascular calcification is strongly associated with poor short-term and long-term outcomes. Um, in the coronary circulation, we've shown both in stable coronary disease and in, the, um, and in patients with acute coronary syndromes, that moderate to severe calcification is present in about a third of all cases, severe in about 15% of cases, and when present, portends worse acute procedural success, increased periprocedural, major adverse cardiovascular events, and increased long-term rates of death, myocardial infarction, restenosis, repeat revascularization, and stent thrombosis. So this has now been shown in study after study. In the periphery, sometimes these vessels get extensively calcified over long um, uh, lengths of, of peripheral vessels, whether in the SFA or below the knee, and again, seriously impairs the ability to get a, both an acute and then a durable long-term outcome. And this is especially important for patients with chronic limb ischemia. And then, of course, we've got kind of a marriage right now going on between connecting the periphery to the coronary circulation. And as we're entered an area of interventional cardiology where we're doing um, more and more large bore procedures, whether with hemodynamic support devices or with structural heart interventions such as transcatheter aortic valve replacement, et cetera, we're using devices that are 12 French, 14 French, 16, 18 French, some of the earlier ones even 20 French or more. And peripheral vascular disease becomes one of the major limitations to be able to safely be able to employ, employ these devices for our patients. And more and more, we are applying some of the newer technologies to be able to have lesion modification to allow us to successfully get better acute and long-term results in the coronary circulation, in the peripheral circulation, and then as an adjunct to being able to deliver these large bore devices to the heart for structural and other interventions. So today we're going to talk about a new advance among the armamentarium of how to deal with um, resistant and heavily calcified vessels in either the coronary or peripheral vasculature, and that is intravascular lithotripsy. So lithotripsy uses sound waves, um, very powerful sound waves, in a balloon-based system to deliver emitters which will then ignite vapor bubbles. And basically these vapor bubbles will then release pressure anywhere from 50 to 100 atmospheres of pressure that last for microseconds. And this has been used to treat um, both concentric calcification and eccentric calcification. There's a peripheral versions of this device and a coronary version of the device. The peripheral, both of the, I should say both versions of the device are approved, CE marked, and are in widespread use in Europe. In the United States, the device is approved and marketed from FDA for use in the periphery uh, for heavily calcified or severely calcified vessels in a variety of different peripheral beds, but it's not approved for use in the coronary circulation, and it's currently undergoing investigation that you'll hear for consideration of pre-market application for use in the coronaries in the United States. So this is a very, very exciting time where we already, of course, have multiple different ways to potentially approach um, uh, heavily calcified vessels from scoring and cutting balloons to atherectomy and rarely laser. Uh, and now this will offer a balloon-based alternative, which is very familiar to all interventional cardiologists, to be able to, to deliver very potent and very focal um, uh, sound wave-based energy, which will be able to selectively ablate calcium while leaving um, uh, other tissue undamaged. So let me show you a short video and you'll see how this device works. In a standard technique, the IVL catheter is advanced and placed at the lesion using marker bands under angiography. 
with the integrated balloon expanded to subnominal pressure of four atmospheres by a mixed saline and contrast solution, the fluid within the fully opposed balloon acts as a coupler to facilitate efficient energy transfer of the sonic pressure waves into the vessel wall to reach the calcium. The generator produces three kilovolts of energy that travels through the connector cable and catheter to the lithotripsy emitters once per second. While other treatments can't differentiate between calcium and soft tissue, acoustic pressure waves pass through soft tissue to impact both intimal and medial calcium. With emitters along the length of the balloon, a localized field effect is created. A small electrical discharge at the emitters vaporizes the fluid within the balloon to create a rapidly expanding bubble that generates the sonic pressure waves and then collapses within a few microseconds. When the waves impact the calcium at nearly 50 atmospheres, they create a series of microfractures. After the calcium has been fractured, and trauma to the surrounding soft tissue has been minimized, the vessel becomes more compliant. Once lithotripsy has been completed, the operator can proceed with the preferred treatment strategy to optimize outcomes. So I'm very fortunate today to be uh, joined by uh, three colleagues and friends who are real luminaries in the field of complex coronary and peripheral intervention who've had experience using this device and are involved in the studies. And we're going to hear about the different applications of intravascular lithotripsy. 